You're listening to The World at Eight with Lynn Mozart. The World at Eight, the number one in the nationalist news. Highlights of the news today, Monday, the 26th of November. Teaching assistant has been handed £800,000 in compensation after tripping over a wheelchair. Immigration chiefs accused of misleading Parliament after devastating report exposes UK border agency incompetence and inefficiency. Black Afro rapist attacks an 11-year-old schoolgirl. Labour councillor Amjid Wazir faces standards committee. John Puxty in Banbury, an ancient crossroads. Moody's strips France of AAA rating. Italy will have 17% of foreigners, over 30% over 65 in 2059. Islam is like Nazism, according to top Sweden Democrat. Pig's head found in Islamic prayer centre in Milan. Thought for the day, UKIP, fostering and hype for Rotherham. And finally, be afraid, be very afraid, not everything is WYSIWYG. UK News. A teaching assistant has been handed a staggering £800,000 in compensation after she tripped and dislocated a finger at work. The payout, one of the highest ever awarded in education, was made after Julianne Huddart tripped over the waist strap of an empty wheelchair while trying to move it. Mrs Hoddard, 49, dislocated her finger and injured her elbow in the 2003 accident and has since been diagnosed with reflex sympathetic dystrophy, a malfunction of the nervous system that causes pain and swelling. The married teaching assistant from Chorley, Lancashire, began a nine-year battle against her local authority for compensation and earlier this year Lancashire County Council agreed to pay £800,000 in damages and £140,000 in legal costs in an out-of-court settlement. The award, which sparked fury amongst war veterans and victims of crime who received substantially less for their injuries, is part of a burgeoning compensation culture amongst teachers who last year claimed a record £25 million following accidents and employment disputes. Immigration chiefs were last night accused of misleading Parliament after a devastating report exposed a catalogue of incompetence and inefficiency at the UK Border Agency. Efforts to trace tens of thousands of asylum seekers were abandoned after minimal efforts to find them and despite promises to MPs that exhaustive checks would be carried out, the Chief Inspector of Borders and Immigration concluded Last night, the Commons Home Affairs Select Committee said it was summoning Rob Whiteman, the UKBA Chief Executive, to check every fact and figure he has given us. The UKBA operation was so inept that more than 150 boxes contained letters from asylum applicants, their lawyers and MPs piled up in an office in Liverpool without either being opened. At one point, the agency had accumulated a backlog of more than 100,000 letters that had not been read. Police in Enfield, northwest London suburb, are looking for a black man with Afro hair who has raped an 11-year-old child on her way home from school. The child, who suffered a two-hour ordeal by the man, had to receive surgery in hospital. The victim was dragged into Jubilee Park after she got off a bus. The rapist is described as black, Afro hair, with a grey top and wearing black baggy jeans. Police have stated that this sort of thing is extremely rare. A World Today writer commented, Clearly not rare enough. Labour councillor for Hanley, Amjid Wazir, has made a phone call to the friend of an assault victim to try and persuade the victim to take an out-of-court settlement. The attacker, a taxi driver, is a friend of the Labour councillor who needed his taxi licence ban lifted. Wazir faces a council standards committee after failing to declare an interest in voting to reinstate the licence of the taxi driver who broke the victim's jaw after the council discovered the friendship. Wazir was also suspended last year for four weeks without pay for using his council position to get the daughter of his friend into an already oversubscribed school. Now I hand you over to John Puxty for his informative talk on Banbury, an ancient crossroads. Banbury, ancient crossroads. 
Situated on Pin Hill by a sweep of the River Cherwell, Banbury has been occupied since the Iron Age. The site forms an ancient crossroads with the salt way from Droitwich to London, crossed by the Banbury Lane connecting Northampton with Stow on the Weld. Being a natural defensive position, this is where the Romano British fought and lost a battle with the invading Saxons. In 913 AD, the Danes ousted the Saxons and turned Bainsbury, as Banbury was then known, into an important market town. By the time of the Doomsday Book in 1086, Bainsbury had 50 hides of land and three mills making it one of the most important Midlands towns. In 1135 a castle was built, and in 1441 Bread Cross was put up. The cross was unusual because it was covered. It was where bread was given to the poor on Good Friday. Not long after, the White Cross and High Cross were erected. But in 1600 the Puritans destroyed all the crosses, considering them idolatrous. During the Civil War, the Royalists garrisoned the castle and the Parliamentarians occupied the town. Oliver Cromwell used Banbury as his headquarters, living in the Reindeer Inn where he planned the Battle of Edge Hill. A canal was opened in 1778 to transport coal and grain from Warwickshire. This was extended to Oxford nine years later and the town opened a new ironworks for the boatyard, which built narrowboats to work on the canal. Alcan Industries opened their factory in 1931, employing a quarter of the town's workers. General Foods opened in 1965, now called Kraft Foods, and built the largest instant coffee factory in the whole world. But Banbury is most famous for the Rhine. Ride a cock horse to Banbury Cross to see a fine lady upon a white horse. With rings on her fingers and bells on her toes, she shall have music wherever she goes. Thank you very much indeed, John. European News Moody's has stripped France of its AAA rating, downloading the country's debt one notch to AA1 with a negative outlook, and Minister Moscovici states it is the previous government's fault. However, the ratings agency said the move was due to France's exposure to the Eurozone crisis and the risk it will have to contribute to bailing out other countries. It also cited internal problems that could affect the nation's long-term growth prospects. These include the rigidities in labour and service markets and low level of innovation, which continue to drive France's gradual but sustained loss of competitiveness and the gradual erosion of its export-orientated industrial base, Moody's said. Another agency, Standard & Poor's, downgraded France in January. Rome. The Italian population will be 17% composed of foreigners and 30% made up of over 65s in 2050. Istat President Enrico Giovannini said on Monday. Currently, immigrants make up 7% of the population. The over-80s will be 50% of the population in 2050. Also, still in Italy, since 2010, as many as 450,000 companies have closed in Italy, erasing about 300,000 jobs, Business Association Confesicenti claimed Wednesday. It released its findings in a report that claimed as many as 600,000 individuals in Italy are also struggling under usurious loan conditions that threaten to bankrupt them. And high-level debts continue to threaten at least 2 million Italian citizens, says the report, released by the head, Conferessa Centi, Marco Venturi. A pig's head was found on Friday at the Palashar Arena in Milan, where the local Islamic community holds weekly prayers. The head was found by delegates of the Civil Protection Agency in an area close to where ceremonies are held every Friday. Palashar is an indoor arena located in the northern Italian city of Milan. It has a seating capacity of almost 9,000 and is used for concerts and sporting events. Local authorities have vigorously condemned the incident. Vice Mayor Maria Grazia Guida called it intolerable. It is light years away from this city, a dialogue of tolerance we are building, she said. The matter is being closely followed by the police. A World Date reporter stated, It seems fair play when Christian churches are being burned down and Christians killed. City of dialogue and tolerance? No, city of cowards and hypocrites. 
Pigs rule in my world. Spain's nationalists win in Catalonian election. Elections in the Catalonia region have seen a big swing, putting the Spanish nationalists in power. Voters handed almost two-thirds of the 135-seat local parliament to four different Catalan separatist parties that all want to hold a referendum on cessation from Spain. World News Protesters in Egypt have set fire to Muslim Brotherhood offices in several cities, according to State TV. They were protesting against President Mohamed Merzi's decree granting him sweeping new powers. The decree states the President's decisions cannot be revoked by any authority, including the judiciary. Supporters and opponents of Mr Merzi have held rival rallies nationwide. The President said no one could stand in the way of Egypt's march forward. Yahya al Khazaz leading figure in Kefaya movement, described on Thursday the constitutional decree President Mohamed Merze issued as a constitutional tyranny, not a constitutional declaration. Merze is digging his own grave as well as the Brotherhood's with these decisions, al Khazaz stated. We are facing Mubarak's regime only worse, al Khazaz told Al Jazeera Mubasha Misra Channel. He described Merze as a failed president who cannot run a canteen, let alone a country. Do Americans understand the Muslim view of war? Throughout the Muslim world, there were celebrations with people singing and dancing and giving each other sweets, celebrating Hamas's victory over the Israelis. Hamas suffered serious losses. As Ehud Barak, Israel's defense minister, stated at the news conference in which he announced the ceasefire, many Hamas leaders were eliminated and their military capabilities were sharply degraded. But Hamas was not defeated. It will clearly still be able to rain down rockets on the Israeli civilian population again when it chooses. What we call terror is a legitimate tactic of Muslim warfare. Terror is how the Muslim prophet Muhammad subdued his enemies. He struck fear into their hearts, coercing them to surrender. Hamas is doing nothing more than following Muhammad's guidance. A World Date writer commented, It is also well known in the Muslim world that Hamas and other terror organizations use civilian homes as bases, so their enemies will be vilified when the inevitable civilian casualties occur. Thought for the day. Foster parents stigmatized and slandered for being members of UKIP. A couple had their three foster children taken away by a council on the grounds that their membership of the UK Independence Party meant that they supported racist politics. The husband and wife, who had been fostering for nearly seven years, said they were made to feel like criminals when a social worker told them that their views on immigration made them unsuitable carers. Speaking to the Daily Telegraph, the couple said they feared that there was a black mark against their name and that they would not be able to foster again. Last night, campaigners representing foster parents described their decision as ridiculous and warned that it could deter any other prospect foster parent from volunteering. Nigel Farage, the leader of UKIP, described the actions of Rotherham Borough Council as a bloody outrage and a political prejudice of the worst kind. Tim Lawton, the former children's minister, said, I'll be very concerned if decisions had been made about the children's future that were based on misguided political correctness around ethnic considerations. Now, the actions of the social workers in Rotherham are disgusting, but it is well known that there are three problems against adoption and fostering by willing and well-meaning people. They are, if you're white, middle class and heterosexual. Now, in the world in which we now live, all the standards hundreds of generations of Brits were brought up to try to attain have now been blown away in a cloud of common purpose and multiculturalism. I'm inclined to look upon the latest F up as just that, a very well publicised pro UKIP hypocritical hype just before the elections in Rotherham taking place this week. We have two points here, one taken up by Melanie Phillips in her article in the Mail today, that these so-called social workers, who are in fact obviously under the domination of the Frankfurt School of Indoctrination, ignore the well-being of children in favour of placing them ostensibly with race-compatible parents, which in itself is derisive of the term multiculturalism. Authorities ignored the plight of poor tortured little Victoria Climbier because in their ignorance they thought that torture and murder is part of the African method of bringing up babies, but they patted themselves on the back because they had placed her with her own ethnicity.
Now, if you are in favour of multiculturalism, you should place a needy child with a family, whatever their colour or culture, who are willing and able to help that child. I would have thought this would promote integration and understanding of the multicultural ethos in our society. Not so, apparently. One must place children with their own ethnic roots, which is a load of rubbish, because it is their own ethnic roots who have deserted these children and why they're over here in the first place. If the powers that be really wanted to give these lost little souls their own ethnic and cultural background, they would make every effort to send them home to relatives in their own countries. The problem being is that when normal white couples are turned down by these jobsworths, they immediately turn to overseas agencies to obtain a child of whatever colour or creed they can. To make matters worse, these idiots, and they are idiots, conferencing around in their own little pond, take children away from couples with whom they are settled to put them into care where they can either enter a system of Muslim grooming or abuse by their elders. Now, regards to UKIP, I am no lover of either UKIP or Farage. I wrote to many of our MEPs calling for support for ProFam. I got a charming letter back from our old Nige, which I will read. Dear Lynn Mozart, I hope indeed that ProFam and UKIP can find some common ground. Please see attachments on political correctness and the defence of matrimony. However, UKIP is not a pressure group asking for others to change the law. We are a political party asking for an electoral mandate so that we can change the law and supervise its implementations. Yours sincerely, Nigel Farage, and copied to the Express newspaper as well. Also with this missive were two attachments named above, Moral Mutation by Nige on the EU and a sheet on the opposition of same-sex marriage, although obviously all for the partnership side. Thanks, Nige, everyone a winner. Now, I stood against our Nige in Buckinghamshire some years ago and call me wicked, but when the news came in about his plane coming down and the headline that day was Right Wing Brings UKIP Plane Down, I chortled and was rather upset he'd walked away from it. You might have gathered that I have no time for UKIP because of the sheer hypocrisy of it and the people who man it. UKIP is an establishment founded and founded political party. It was founded by Alan Sked in 1993 as an improvement on the Anti-Federalist League movement against the Maastricht Treaty, which was set up in 1991. Kilroy Silk was a much-publicised member, but resigned in January 2005 to found Veritas. He took many UKIP members and two London Assembly members with him. When Sked resigned, he said that UKIP was too right-wing and too racist. And this, of course, endeared the party to Conservatives who were too frightened to join the British National Party, or not honest enough, but sought what they thought was the hidden agenda of UKIP. Of course, UKIP is not a lover of Britain or the British at heart. UKIP has only very lightly skirted the terrible problems of massive immigration and multiculturalism, preferring to remain a one-horse party of the Get Out of Europe Brigade. Everyone needs someone to hate, and it is, of course, preferable to dislike your own kind rather than another kind. It is with this in mind that you have actually to listen to what they say. They are all for getting out of Europe. Well, this is fine, as they can afford to do so. They have 12 EU members, all raking in considerable amounts of money from an organisation they wish to leave. <laughs> I do not think so. They have three people in the unelected House of Lords, all of which are there because of defections by Conservative peers. UKIP is very well funded. It is the flagship of what is promoted as a right-wing party, but in fact is not anything near it. The members it attracts are upper middle class, white, retired and rich. Do not forget the rich part. This enables them to create and form very large and well-paid presence in any area they stand in usually ably helped by the residents of the upper-middle-class communities they choose. UKIP pay their regional organisers and staff. This money is not derived from unions, as in the Labour case, but from private corporations, businesses and very well-placed donors. UKIP appeals to cowards and hypocrites, upper-middle-class people who think they're living on the wild side politically and really should never be called nationalists or even quasi-nationalists. They simply are not. By rights and birth, I should be a Conservative, and indeed was for a couple of years, many years ago. I would never consider UKIP as an alternative to the British National Party, because although not all politicians are liar, most UKIP politicians are. I place UKIP in the same slot as I put the British Democrats and the little branches of poison ivy that inhabit our political world, a nuisance and a vote splitter, but to serious nationalists, a non-starter. 
a government pawn in the country of government pawns that seeks to detract the nationalist voters into something they think is safe. And it is safe to vote for UKIP. You will not lose your job over UKIP. You will not lose your family over UKIP. You will not lose your friends over UKIP. You will, however, lose the battle for England if you vote for UKIP. You will be providing a governmental organisation more money and more power than it deserves. You will be falling into the hands of the multiculturalists if you vote UKIP. And more important than all of that, can you face the years ahead if you make a mistake? Can you look your children in their eyes and tell them you are thinking of them? I think not. Vote for UKIP and you're doing it for yourself and no one else. That is why UKIP are blowing this Rotherham business out of all proportion. The children are Eastern European. This couple clearly have no bias as to who they look after. UKIP is clearly for multiculturalism and the evil it brings. The social services probably will vote UKIP and the whole thing is a well-planned hype to get sympathy before an election. Vote British National Party. We may not win, but then neither will UKIP. But it will show the way the rest of the Europe is going now. You cannot straddle the fence much longer. Stand up and be counted. Be a British nationalist and proud. And finally, a Belgian discovers his wife used to be a man after 19 years. The man named as Jan is now seeking an annulment after 19 years of marriage. He married Monica, his family's au pair, in 1993, despite legal oddities raised by the Belgian authorities. He stated, I feel I've been assaulted, he told the Het Newsblad newspaper. I brought her to Belgium. That was not easy. The Belgian courts had serious doubts about the authenticity of her birth and her identity papers, but eventually they accepted it anyway. I thought she was an attractive woman, all woman. She had no male traits. However, in recent weeks he discovered that his wife had been born a man and had undergone a sex change. Jan said that he and his wife decided not to have children, but she kept the illusion going she could by imitating monthly periods. Monica recently got a full-time job and started to change, Jan stated. My oldest son saw her sometimes at nightclub. She began to wear very flashy clothes, those ultra-short skirts and tiny tops, so her abdomen was completely exposed. Finally, Jan found amorous messages on her computer. They had a violent row during which the police were called. This presenter says, It is clear she got what she needed, a home, money and a man, and has now decided to lead his or her own life. It's a common tale of marriages of this sort. Funny, but sad. Not everyone is what you see is what you get. You have been listening to The World at Eight. I am Lynn Mozart, and I wish you all a very good night.